O come, let us sing to our God. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. We come, O God, into your presence with thanksgiving, rejoicing with songs of praise. Well, welcome to Park Avenue's Christian Church's Worship. Uh, we have some announcements. Uh, next Sunday, the 7th, after worship, CE will meet. Uh, also, the search committee is going to have a second interview with the candidate. Please keep them in your prayers. Uh, and I think we're ready for the prelude. <laughs> Would you pray with me as we enter worship? Gracious God, gentle in your power and strong in your tenderness, you have brought us forth by the womb of, from the womb of your being and breathed into us the breath of life. We know that we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from you. Feed our deep hungers with the living bread that you give us in Jesus Christ. May Jesus promise where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them, be fulfilled in us. Through the Holy Spirit, make us a joyful company of your people, so that with the faithful in every place and time, we may praise and honor you, God Most High. Amen.
You may be seated. Good morning. We um, have some joys and concerns today. Um, please lift up, uh, we've been praying for baby Tommy, and um, she has passed away, and that's friends of um, Mary, Hannah, and, so, and Holly. So please keep that family in your prayers. Is that Portia? Is that right, Mary, Portia? Yeah, Portia. Yeah, so please keep that family in your prayers. Also, um, Dean's niece, um, Cheryl, Rochelle, she, um, they've had hospice come in. So if you could please keep um, Dean and their entire family in your prayers. Um, and then the rest of our concerns, we have a, a long list of them. Um, Pastor Tim sent those out on Monday. So um, if you make sure that you continue to pray for all those people on that list, will you please join me in prayer? Our gracious God, we just pause now to center our scattered senses upon your presence this morning. We thank you for the many blessings that you've given us, so many that we don't even see them all, so many little miracles, the miracles of healing, miracles of comfort, and just your presence with us. We thank you for this church family and ask that you would bless each one of them. There's a lot of people, Lord, that are suffering in our world. We pray especially for Portia's family and for Cheryl's family as they struggle during this time. Be their comfort. We ask for healing for all of those that need that. And we just ask that you would be with Pastor Tim as he is on vacation this, this week. Be with him, him and Mary Kay and bless them during their time. Keep them safe. We pray for the rest of our staff, for their health, that you will continue to be with them. And Lord, we pray for our search committee. Be with that person that you have chosen to shepherd our flock. We pray that you would make yourself known to them and, and help them to, to feel that call to come here. And we pray for each member of the search committee that you would fill them with your spirit and give them discernment and wisdom as they continue, continue to interview. We pray for our country and our world the fighting in Ukraine, all of those that are suffering. We ask that you would just be with each person here and bless them during this day and this coming week. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Okay, kids, I got some stuff to show you, so I need your help though, so you're going to have to tell me what this stuff is. So you can just shout it out. Anybody know what this is? Stress ball, that's right, it's a stress ball. So I'm a school counselor and we have tools. We use lots of different tools when we're working with students. And one tool that we have is a stress ball. When kids are stressed or anxious or worried, sometimes they like to use that. Does, um, oh, this might look familiar to some of you. Where did you get that? Where, did you, where have you seen this before? Yeah, you have it. Pastor Tim gave you that, didn't you? Yeah, Pastor Tim gave you that. And I have one sitting on my desk at, at um, school, and kids just come in, and they turn it, and they turn it, and turn it. They love it. It just helps them relax. Um, I also have this fiber optic thing that I didn't think would be that popular, but the kids just come in and play with it. Even high school kids, they pick it up, and they just play with it, and play with it, and play with it. It just shocks me of the things. And some of you know what this is. I know Gwen knows what this is. Pop it, because Gwen, Gwen had one of these the other day, and I'm like, oh my gosh, Gwen, you have a pop it. Kids love this. Even adults love this. It's kind of, kind of addictive to use. And then, um, well, I have lots of stuff in here, but another thing that, um, you know what this is? 
Fidget spinner, yeah. Lots of people use fidget spinners, but this is a really cool one because it's a poppet and fidget spinner. It's a poppet fidget spinner. Yeah, or a poppet spinner. Yeah, that's right. So I have one of these for you today um, at the end, so um, I'll, I'll give you all one of these. I want you, though, when I'm stressed, what works better for me than all of these different tools? What, what else would work good if we're stressed and we... We want to calm down. Anybody have any ideas? Prayer. prayer. So prayer works for me. Sometimes these tools work for me too, but prayer is what really works. And in the scripture in um, Philippians 4, 6, it says, don't worry about anything, but in all your prayers, ask God for what you need, always asking him with a thankful heart. So the next time you're stressed or you're worried or you're mad or you're upset, and you, you can get this out and spin it or pop it, but also when you use this, try to remember to use this to remind yourself to pray, to pray to God and thank him for all the things that he has given you, okay? Um, let's have a quick prayer, and then I'll hand these out. Dear Jesus, we thank you that you are always with us and that we can always come to you and pray to you with thankful hearts. Amen. All right, so I'm going to give you one of these. What color do you want? I'll just put it at I'll put it at your thing. What color do you want? My sister probably needs one. Okay. What color do you want? Okay. You, you want me to put it on your place? Can I have yes. the pink one. Pink? Can I have blue? Yep. Blue. Leo, what color do you want? What color of fidget spinner do you want? I got all these different colors. Ooh, black. Black? Oh, the two one? Two one or the five one? <laughs> Three one? Leo, which one do you want? What color? Green? Okay. Thanks. Hold it then. Wait, um, with this song, just think of through all the things that we've been through and are going through or will be going through, that no matter what we're going through, Christ is always with us and sees us and carries us, and it will be well with him and in our soul. No grand earth has quaked before Moved by the sound of his voice And seas that are shaken and stirred Can be calmed and broken for my regard And through it all, through it all
his name. So let go my soul and trust in him. The ways of pain still know his name. So let go my soul and trust in him. It is well. Please sing with us. With my soul, it is well. It And through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. It is well with me. Thanks, Gwen and Brenda and Lynn, or Gwen and Brenda, that was beautiful. Thank you. Um, I'm reading from Isaiah chapter 44, verse 6 through 8. <clears throat> this is what the Lord says, excuse me. <clears throat> Israel's King and Redeemer, the Lord Almighty, I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me, there is no God. Who then is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and lay out before me what has happened since I established my ancient people and what is yet to come. Yes, let him foretell what will come. Do not tremble. Do not be afraid. Did I not proclaim this and foretell it long ago? 
You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? No, there is no other rock. I know not one. Before I um, share a message with you, I forgot somebody back here, so I'm just going to go give her one. You're never too old to have one of these. <laughs> oh, you did come get one? Oh, I didn't see you come up and get one. All right, well, I have a couple extras, so you may want some. <laughs> For your sister. Okay, we'll get Tim one. <laughs> so, um, have you ever played the game where somebody says a word and then you have to say what comes to your mind first? Okay, you're going to play that game with me. Okay, we'll make it easy. So I'm going to say salt. I think everybody said the same thing. Okay, how about this one? Um, coffee? Oh, I heard two different things. I heard cream. I heard tea. Did anyone say anything else? Yuck. She said yuck. <laughs> Good. All right, how about this? Dog. I think we were all the same. Okay, it's going to get a little harder. Apple. I heard pear, orange, pie. Oh, good. <laughs> you know where your mind is. <laughs> um, how about this? Church. God, Jesus, Sunday school, family. Okay, community. Oh, good. Okay, how about this one? Idol. I knew I was going to hear American and Billy. <laughs> That's good. Okay, so today we're going to talk a little bit about idols. When I think of idols, I think of the Old Testament. And I think of the story of the golden calf that we all know about, where Moses went up to Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights, and the Israelites thought he had died. And so they asked Aaron to mold for them. They brought all their jewelry and they asked him to mold a golden calf and they all worshiped this idol, this golden calf. That's what I think of when I think of idol. And then, you know, as we know, Moses came down the mountain, was very angry and, and smashed the tablets and had to go back up and, and uh, get more, ten, get them again. But the second commandment that, that Moses had was, you shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything. How ironic is that? And then he comes down the mountain, and all the Israelites have this idol. The definition of idolatry in Christianity is the worship of someone or something other than God as though it were God. The word idol or idolatry is mentioned in the Bible over 230 times. So God must have thought it was kind of important to put it in there. And the first commandment, as you probably know, is you shall have no other gods before me. So it is very important, but normally we don't think of idols or idolatry in the New Testament. However, in um, Colossians 3.5 and Ephesians 5.5, 5, there is talk about greed being idolatry. Ephesians 5.5 5 says, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such as an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of God. So what did Jesus say about idolatry? Well, I couldn't find anything in the Bible where he actually used the word, but there's several places where there's quite a bit of subtle idolatry going on. For example, do you remember Jesus and the rich man? When the rich man asked what he needed to do to inherit eternal life, Jesus listed six of the commandments. Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give false testimony, do not defraud, and honor your father and mother. And the rich man said he had followed all of those commandments. And Jesus said, one thing you lack, go and sell everything, give it to the poor, and follow me. I think it's interesting when Jesus listed those six commandments he didn't, he didn't list the first two um, that we just mentioned. But the scripture goes on to say that at this, the man's face fell, and he went away sad 
because he had great wealth. So the rich man seemed to care more about his possessions and his wealth than he did about God. So I think that's some subtle idolatry going on there. Jesus also was tempted by idolatry. Do you remember when he fasted in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights? He was tempted by Satan, and Matthew 4 tells us, again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you bow down and worship me. And Jesus said, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Jesus also tells us what the greatest commandment is. Does anybody remember the greatest commandment? It's the second greatest. What, what did he say? The first one was? Love, love, your, love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and then love your neighbor as yourself is the second. So um, if we are doing that, if we are really doing that, it's really not possible that we are worshiping other idols. So since my mind thinks of that golden calf when I think of idols, and, and today I don't, really, I don't really think about idolatry because I don't have a golden calf in my house that I worship, but what are things that we maybe worship or we spend more time with than we do with God? Do we spend more time with someone or something? Our phones. Our phones. Television, sometimes computers. Mine's my phone. Sporting events. Sporting events, yeah. For some people, it might be social media, might be TV, might be computers. Mine's my phone. When I lose my phone or it breaks, I get so anxious and I feel so lost. I just can't stand not having my phone with me. And then... I've gotten into this really bad habit of playing this stupid game on my phone <laughs> called Block Sudoku. And I'm addicted, aren't I, Lori? I'm addicted to it. I was addicted to it. I, I did it all the time, anytime I'd have a free moment. And, and I would make the excuse like, um, you know, I had a long day of work. I'm just going to veg out on the couch tonight, and I'm just going to just veg and play this game. And I'd play the game, and I wanted to beat my high score plane, and next thing I know, it was time for me to go to bed. I had wasted my whole evening, but then I just kept doing it every day. I was just like addicted to this game. And then I would get bed, ready for bed at night, which is my Bible reading time and my prayer time, and I would grab my phone and scroll through Facebook and scroll through my emails for no reason, just what, to avoid my prayer time and my Bible reading with God? It was, it was awful. Even when I was writing this, my phone buzzed and I picked it up to look to see who it was. And I was so angry at myself that I turned the buzzer off and I put it as far away from me as I could. And right when I was writing this thing about idolatry, and here I am spending more time on my phone than I am with God. And so what I'm trying to do this week I'm trying to, I haven't played my game this week. Did you notice that, Lori? I haven't played my game and, um, since Monday. And um, I'm trying to spend a lot more time reading the Bible and spending time um, with God. I'm reading this great book that I've told a few of you about. So if I already told you, just ignore me. It's called How to Hear God, A Simple Guide for Normal People. It's so interesting. He talks about, Pete talks about um, the different ways that we hear from God. We might hear um, in the Bible or through Jesus' words. We might hear him through prayer or prophecy or that gentle whisper in the silence. We might hear him in a dream or unconscious or even in our community and culture. And so I'm trying to do that. This book reminds me that there's so much more that I can be doing to honor God and to love him and to communicate with him. 
So in our scripture today, this, this scripture, um, some of us are reading the Bible in a year. I don't know if you remember Pastor Tim invited anybody that wanted to in January. And so we got these chronological Bibles. It goes through the Bible chronologically. And right now, so it's in Isaiah. We're kind of in um, Chronicles and 2 Kings and Isaiah. And this scripture just popped out. And this verse I just love, it says, Is there any other God besides me? No, there is no other rock. I know not one. I think I was allowing my rock to be my phone. And Isaiah goes on to tell in other books in Scripture about how idols are made with human hands. And it's just metal, and it's stone, and the idols can't see or hear or speak, but our God can. God created this whole world and this whole universe, and it's just so vast. I don't even know how we can fathom all of this. So why am I spending so much time on my phone instead of with my creator? So I decided I'm going to drop that phone, give it up, give more time to my creator, more time to my Lord and my Savior. And I invite you, if there's anybody here that has something to give up, try, try giving it up even just for a week. It's, it's just so rewarding. I just feel so much better since I've done it. And yesterday, as I was <clears throat> reading my Bible time, this, this old little slip of paper fell out of my Bible, and it was, it was kind of um, appropriate because... It goes right with the message today. It says, we can't afford to forget that, that, that this world is just a rest stop for us on the way to our true home. So how do you know if you're really living in the light of this truth? One way is by testing your reaction to the loss of any creature comforts that God might ask you to surrender. For instance, make a list of any three possessions, hobbies, or activities to which you've grown attached. If God were to require any of them from you, would that loss throw your life into turmoil? Or would you continue on with Christ as strong as ever? Ponder this question honestly sometime today. Hopefully we would, we would be able to, to finish on with Christ as strong as ever. Would you pray with me? Dear Lord, we thank you for this time. Help us to make sure that you are always our rock and our Redeemer. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I guess I'll just stay here. I'll just stay here. Um, so I was talking to some people a few weeks ago about communion. I grew up in the Presbyterian Church, and we had communion the first Sunday of every month. And when I joined this church, one of my family members said, wow, you, and I told them we had communion every, every week, and, and they're like, wow, doesn't that, isn't that going to get redundant and boring? And I thought, oh, I wonder if it will. And you know what? It's the opposite. It's such a focal part of this worship service that it's such a, a wonderful time where I can feel God's presence, and I can ask him to forgive me of all my sins and just feel his power and his his grace wash over me during the communion music. So um, today, when we're taking communion, think about that. Think about Christ and the forgiveness and his forgiveness, and let that, that power and that grace just wash over you. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death 
until he comes. Our gracious God, we thank you for loving the world into existence and sustaining all life by your goodness. With gratitude, we recall that you revealed yourself through the prophets and teachers and most fully in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Through the power of your spirit, let us know afresh the joy of Christ's living presence, the strength to face every circumstance of life, and the knowledge that nothing can ever separate us from your love. Amen. Would you join with me in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. taken from 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. Like good stewards of the multicolored grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. We ask God's blessing on the gifts and the givers for Christ church. Amen. So this is another time in our service that's different than my upbringing. <clears throat> How great it is that we, we offer a ch an opportunity for people to come forward to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior or to come forward and reaffirm their faith in Christ or even to come forward and transfer their membership to be a part of this church family. 
Um, so if um, you feel led to do that while we are singing this hymn, um, Joe and I will meet you up front and have a prayer with you. So please stand as we sing. So who's your rock? If it's not Jesus, think about it this week and try to do what you can to make it be him. Let us pray, Father, help us to live this day to the full, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help us to give ourselves away to others, being kind to everyone we meet this week. Spirit, help us to love the lost proclaiming Christ in all we do and say. Amen.